Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working with CAN bus, which is the controller area network, often seen in vehicles. What we've got is we've got a Yoshi Pi here running a Raspberry Pi connected over to an MCP2515. From there, it goes over to this PCAN device, which is a USB device connected to my PC. And we're going to do bi-directional communication in both standard and extended frames. Let's get to it. Pretty much every car made in, I don't know, at least the last couple of decades has one of these connectors under the dash. This is the OBD connector or OBD2 for onboard diagnostics. We have a connection that's the male side for it that looks like this. So if we want to communicate with your car to pull codes or see telemetry data live, we need to talk through this connector. This connector has a whole ton of pins on it but that is primarily for backward compatibility. Really all we need is two pins on this for the CAN bus uh, controller area network. There's also power ground, there's things for older J1708 and a bunch of other things, but really the CAN bus is what most modern vehicles use for communication. So we need to talk to the CAN bus from our microcontroller. In order to do that, we need a transceiver. Here's a cheap MCP2515 transceiver. This one uses SPI for communication. So we can use this from an Arduino, a Raspberry Pi, a Meadow F7, an STM32, an ESP32. You could use basically any microcontroller that communicates over SPI to talk to the bus. These are the bus lines here. The bus is a differential bus, so it's got two uh, lines that are basically inverted from one another. It doesn't have uh, a clock and data. So this is a synchronous serial or an asynchronous serial rather. So you have to know the baud rate on which you're communicating. Newer CAN bus does have a protocol that allows compression and adjustment of the bus speed, but we're not gonna go into that. We're just gonna talk about how do I use something like this transceiver to communicate with the bus on the car. Another option that you might have, I have here, is this is a USB device that I can just plug into my PC. So if you had a laptop, you could use something like this. This is just a breakout for these two CAN bus lines here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and this to show uh, bi-directional. So we'll use the PC from one end of communication and then we will use a Raspberry Pi running on this Yoshi Pi. And there's a link to get this hardware down in the description. But we're going to be communicating both directions and we're going to be doing it in C Sharp. So .NET applications on both sides. Let's go take a look at some code on how all of this works together. Let's start by taking a look at the PCAN version, the USB device plugged into the PC. Really? The logic for both of these is nearly identical, and that's done using interfaces. Uh, this is all using the Meadow software stack. So if we take a look for the PCAN thing, uh, the device, what we're doing is we have a PCAN USB expander. So we just create an instance of the expander, and then we call create CAN bus. Now create CAN bus is kind of the the entry point into using CAN with the Meadow software stack. So create CAN bus is on any device that uh, implements the iCAN controller. So we've got the PCAN USB device implements iCAN controller and that uh, forces it to have a create CAN bus and we pass in the bit rate and the bus number, but this returns this iCAN bus interface the iCAN bus interface is rather simple. We've got read frame, write frame, an event for when a frame is received, uh, a Boolean check to see if a frame is currently available. Then we have a set filter and set mask. I'm not going to go over set filter and set mask primarily because I haven't implemented them yet. Uh, those are coming, but right now what I want to talk about is reading and writing frames, just basic bus operation. So if we go back and take a look at the application, what we have is we create the expander, or basically we create an object that implements the iCAN controller. And this will be important when we look at the second instance of this using the 2515. We create whatever object 
uh, or uh, class it is, an instance of it that is that I can controller, and then use the controller to create our bus at the bus uh, bitrate that we're interested in. 250 is a really common one for vehicle buses, especially older ones. Once we have that bus, we can then do simple things like read frame. So we've just got a loop here. We're reading the frame. Uh, read frame returns a nullable I can frame. So that nullable object, if it has uh, data on the bus, it will return it as a object. CAN bus has a lot of different types of frames. The primary one that we're interested in is called a data frame, and a data frame can be either extended or standard. Standard has an 11-bit address, and extended has a 29-bit address. It simply allows you to have more identifiers for different types of data on the bus. Both of them contain eight bytes of data. Again, I don't wanna go into a lot of detail on the bus. You can go uh, longer data with a different type of uh, frame, but really what's important is to understand that we basically have different types of frames, standard and extended, which have different address lengths or ID lengths. Uh, and the data typically on both of these is an eight byte packet. So what we're going to do is we're going to read and it'll give us back a frame. Now this frame is just an I can frame interface implementing object. So we don't know exactly what type of frame it is when it comes in. It could be a data frame. It could be an error frame. It could be a retransmit request frame. Here, we're just taking a look at standard and extended data frames. If it's a standard data frame, uh, we output that it is a standard data frame and we give you the ID and the payload, so the eight bytes. And then if it's an extended, we say it's an extended frame. So it can differentiate between standard and extended. And then we've got a tick that updates here as we're running. You can see it gets incremented. And every 50 ticks, we send out a standard frame. We can also use this to write an extended data frame. It's identical. We would just change whether it's a standard or extended here. Then we give it an ID because this is an 11 bit, 7FF is the largest ID that you can use on a standard frame. The extended again is 29 bits, so you can have a lot more uh, different IDs. These IDs are standardized, especially for OBD. There's a whole SAE spec on what those IDs mean. So there's a specific ID for say coolant temperature or engine RPM or vehicle speed, fuel level, Basically, everything that you can see on your dash has a CAN ID associated with it. As I said, what we do is we run and it every 50 ticks, it writes out this frame. So using the CAN bus is as simple as creating an instance of an ICAN controller, using that controller to create a bus instance at a speed that you're interested in, and then using that bus instance to read or write frames. The nice thing about this is we have this instance of an I can controller implementing object. So the PCAN USB implements this CAN controller. And then from that point on, we just have this interfaced I can bus that we can create with a given bit rate and then read and write frames. In this case, it's this USB device. But if we have something else like this uh, SPI-based MCP2515, and the SPI-based is much more friendly for microcontrollers like the Yoshi Pi or something like uh, an MCP or uh, STM32, uh, Arduino, whatever. If they implement the same thing, basically all of our logic for handling the frames is the same. So if we take a look at a sample for the MCP2515, here we create the MCP2515, and in this case, we have to give it information about the uh, SPI bus, the chip select, an interrupt line. This one actually requires that we tell it what the oscillator, so on board on this, it has a crystal right here. You have to take a look at the can of the crystal to find out what speed it's running at because that affects bus speed. So it's got 
a lot more parameters than we had here for the pecan. We just uh, have no parameters at all. We just have it plugged in and then we uh, give it the instantiation. Whereas with the MCP2515, we need to know a bit more about how it's wired up. But this MCP2515, and if we go look at the definition, you can see it implements the ICANN controller as well. So when I create it, I now create CAN bus at this 250K, create CAN bus at 250K, so identical. And it the code from that point on is, is the exact same. There is no difference between this and this. So I've got a PC application running over USB to hardware, and the code for it is identical to this application that is running on an ARM-based device, Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, using the SPI bus. So outside of this creation, these are identical, which is the important value of being able to use the Meadow stack. So what that does is that allows me to prototype things on my desktop, move it to a Raspberry Pi. I can prototype things on one. I can move to other hardware. I can actually have common code base for different devices. If I have a stable of different types of devices that I want to have different capabilities, more expanded capabilities, that kind of thing. It allows us to have code that is the same on all of these devices. Let's go take a look at how this works uh, in actual practice. Okay, so here again, I've got the Yoshi Pi running an application and uh, at the top, we've got some send stuff. And at the bottom, we've got this box labeled receive. You can see here, we've got two different IDs. This one is, it's in 11 bits, so 7FF. This is the highest that you can get in a standard. And this has a longer ID for an extended frame. And then we've got some send buttons. IDs and the data are hard coded in this application just for simplicity. And then we've got this receive for when data comes in. Let's go take a look at the code though. The code is obviously a little bit more complex than the sample that I had just shown because we've got a bunch of UI goo that we have to wire up. If we ignore all of the, the work used for the UI, it really boils down to the same type of application. In fact, it's a little simpler than the sample that we had because we're using an interrupt for an event. So we create the MCP expander here. And then we create CAN bus, just like we had seen. And then that gets passed over to this main controller. The idea here is this main controller can then be used in any application. I could actually move this to the desktop and use that PCAN device instead, because it's simply taking in this iCAN bus interface. So it doesn't care what the underlying hardware is running on. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to subscribe to the on frame received. So it automatically will let us know when a frame comes in. It's doing this based on the interrupt that we are connected to for the MCP 2515. We could still use a poll and uh, call read. That would work just fine. But in this case, we're using an event simply to make things a little simpler. When a frame is received, we determine what type it is. And the only reason that we determine the type is so that we can give different output messages. But then we take that data and we send it over to the display service and it will show it. Now on the application, again, we have these two send buttons. When I click one of those send buttons, it's going to request that we send a frame and so if the ID is low, it's going to create a standard frame. Otherwise, it's going to create an extended frame, stuff the payload in it, and write it out to the bus. Again, just like that console uh, sample app that we looked at. In order to make the demonstration at least somewhat you know, useful, I want to put multiple things on the bus at the same time. So we'll have the Yoshi Pi running an application that we just looked at here. And then over on the other side, over here, what we're going to do is we're going to just run that pecan basic sample that the console app that we had looked at earlier. So if I launch this, you can see it already sent this frame. And what we have is we've got the frame ID, frame data, 
and then the count of the number of frames here. And if we take a look at that code real quick, you can see when it's sending the data, it's changing this last byte. This last byte is effectively the tick, uh, just the high byte of it. It's just the idea is that it's sending some different data every time. So if you will watch this last byte here, you'll see it change. So we've had nine frames sent and we've got this here. And you can see the application is just sitting here sending. So while we have the app up, now we can come back over to the Yoshi Pie and hit send and we'll send just say the, uh, the standard ID frame. And you can see uh, ones through eights and this application actually increments this last byte. So it's going to send an 89 next, but you can see over here in the console, we had a standard frame two seven FF with that data. So if I click it a few more times, oh, there's the extended frame because I fat fingered it, but you can see the standard frame or the extended frame. I can send either one. So we've got data coming from this through the MCP 2515 into the PCAN device over to USB to the PC. So we actually have the Yoshi Pi here communicating with my PC over the CAN bus, sending and receiving both standard and extended CAN data frames, all with almost identical code on both ends. And in fact, I could run this UI on Meadow desktop on my PC and have really the same user interface uh, on the PC. And there we have an example of how you as a .NET developer can use the CAN bus on a PC, on a Yoshi Pi, so a Raspberry Pi Zero. We could do it on a Raspberry Pi 4 or 5. We could run this on a Meadow Feather, which is an STM32. We could run it on this, which is also a Meadow, but this is the core compute. Anything that is capable of running .NET could run this application that we just saw uh, without any modifications. That's all I've got for you for today. Thanks for watching.